Prepare to be tormented by a roll for crit review of Arkham Horror Third Edition. We here are intimately familiar, as probably many of you are, with Arkham Horror's Second Edition. And the Third Edition does a lot of new things, streamlines some things, changes some things completely. We're going to talk about how it differs exactly and what we think. So. Run us through the gist of yeah. Arkham Horror. This isn't just a uh, time repeating itself because it's Azatoth. Uh, this is actually a whole new game. It's not simply they took the second edition and maybe tweaked a few rules. So what happens in this game, instead of the one big board that stays the same, you will choose an Elder God to fight against, such as Azatoth, and it will actually tell you how to set up a modular board as well as a special monster deck, a, uh, a Mythos Cup, and some other little fine little details. The basic turn, just like in the old one, you're gonna start with your investigators. We have four here, for example. And they have their stats, which are similar to maybe Eldritch Horror. You'll recognize some of those symbols. Uh, they also have a starting health and health sanity, as well as their own special action. What's new is they have a focus limit. Now, what a focus is, on your turn, you can focus and get these little uh, tokens. They have a sort of limited number they can have to sort of boost your stats. So right now, uh, Wendy has an additional plus one to observation. You can also spend them for uh, different abilities or re-rolling dice or die, which is really helpful sometimes. But on your turn, you're pretty much to do a lot of things you remember before, moving around and such. The big things that you're going to have to do, obviously, are attacking monsters who are on the field, which we'll get to when we get to the monster phase. Uh, warding, which is actually trying to remove these uh, tokens, which can open some bad anomalies and gateways. Or spending clues that you've gathered during the encounter phase uh, to put on the codex, which is actually another new thing. They have the codex and archive, which is pretty much uh, MIDI goals that are going on through the story. And depending on the number of clues or maybe bad tokens get added on there, uh, they'll branch out to different paths. So that's one of the interesting things. If you do really well, you'll get, it'll tell you to go to card maybe six in this whole deck. Uh, if you do bad, it'll tell you maybe to go to card five. It depends on your story. Mm -hmm. But after I've all said and done, then the monsters get to move. There's now, the way monsters work now is they're cards. There's no little uh, minis or uh, the pogs from the old one. Mm -hmm. And they have, a, they have a front side which tell you how they hunt or they spawn, and a back which is combat and all those weird abilities. Some of, uh, some of them don't move. For example, this guy, he just adds Doom tokens around, which ones are going to add to these an uh, anomalies, which are very bad. Uh, once there are either five on the board in a whole city or three in one section, then you add these. Uh, they pretty much have bad effects and stop you from getting clues. That's why it covers them. And then you're going to find out more what happens in the encounter phase. So once you're through with the monster phase, then the encounter phase begins, and that's when every player at the table gets to draw a card, depending on which location they're in, and have their own sort of mini adventure. Encounter, if you will. Mm -hmm. So for example, uh, Wendy here is in the north side section of town. So she's gonna draw from the north side pile, and that's gonna have three sections on it. Since she's at the train station, she'll read the train station part of the card. Uh, usually this will involve doing some kind of a skill check, you might get an item, you might get a chance to spend some money for a new item or uh, uh, some kind of an ability, or it'll also could be one of the special event cards, which are how you get the clues. So anytime a clue spawns in a city, one of these special cards is shuffled into the top three cards of each of the deck from the town that it's in. And if you draw it and you succeed, that's how you'll get this clue to be used later on, as we said. So every player gets to go around and do that depending on where they are. And then finally, there's the mythos phase. That's when the bad stuff could happen. So in this version of the game, there's the special mythos cup. In our case, we have a bag. It's whatever opaque <laughs> container you decide suits your needs best. You're gonna draw from it. Each person draws two tokens. And depending on the scenario, there will be different options in there. And they do different things. For example, this one spawns a new clue. This one you draw from a special newspaper deck, which could be some kind of other effect, probably a bad one. Uh, it could uh, create issues with doom tokens, with gates opening, monsters spawning, or there could even be special effects depending on the scenario or which cards you draw. Could even be this blank one when nothing happens, which is the one of the best case scenarios you can hope for. Uh, and every player does that, and then you start all over again going through your actions, etc. Until you've completed all these steps, which you'll kind of find out what you need to do to win the game as the game goes on. Or lose. <laughs> right. You'll find out what you need to do to lose as well. So uh, it shares a lot of the same DNA 
of the original Arkham Horror. Definitely a lot of different things, uh, but uh, the, really the, the core mechanic still is definitely the skill checks, which is where you're rolling a certain number of dice depending on what your attribute level is, strength, uh, lore, intelligence. Yes. I get the names wrong. <laughs> They're all in the card, They're, which uh, remind me more from Eldritch Horror, so it seems to be borrowing from the entire uh, Arkham universe that right, Fantasy Flight right. has. Uh, they also, of course, you got your blessings and your curse. Mm -hmm. uh, the Try to help push those odds in your favor. The other interesting thing I, I think we forgot to mention is that the deck of, that you get the clues from, mm -hmm. you actually, depending on like we chose Azatoth, there's a deck just for him. So when you read the story, it will say things like, you'll, uh, for example, one's going to talk a lot about people with milky white eyes. So it's really going to get a bit more flavorful into right. your uh, who you're fighting against. Yeah, it feels much more consistent rather than just, you're still going to have those random ones in there, but it's more likely you get these where it does feel more like you are on a specific story. Right. I mean, the, the, um, the, each area has eight cards. Mm -hmm. the, the generic ones, which should always be the, about the same. And that's more like when the original Arkham, everything was... There, I don't remember anyone being really specific. Like, these are Cthulhu's cards. Right. I think that was more introduced in the Eldritch Horror line. Also, in addition to Eldritch, I think it borrows a little bit of that from the living card game in mm -hmm. terms of the, the narrative style of it. It feels more coherent. Uh, but certainly it's still, everything is replayable. Uh, there are different choices that you maybe can make or just different uh, outcomes if you do well or not. That's true. There is one that we came across where you can choose to join a, a cult, in essence. Uh, and depending on how you prog uh, progress through that storyline, because there were multiple endings where maybe that choice didn't matter or did. It, it, you, there was some really interesting that it actually is like, the people who made this choice, this happens if you didn't this choice. So right, right. Th there is some interesting re outcomes that can happen here. Yeah. But it's not as if uh, it's like a campaign or you can only play it once and you know the outcome. There, you can you can definitely go back. There, there's just more sort of a, a guiding line. To That's true. I have paid Azathoth twice. And technically, I've won with both of them. But one of them was like, I felt like a pretty, or it, maybe you can argue what's really winning with one or the other. <laughs> I don't want to say more because you say, but it was interesting. Yeah. Because the one I did to... obviously better than the other, like in terms of getting clues on there and stuff. Right, right. It, uh, uncovering those new things for the first time, it, there is some joy of dis discovering that for sure. I still think it's shorter than the second edition of Arkham. So yeah, that's really the big thing is uh, anytime a new edition comes out, I feel like of a game, you pretty the word streamlined, I feel like is always going to come up because they're not going to make it more complex <laughs> probably <laughs> hopefully and that is uh you know depending on how much you like that original version might scare you or entice you i will say even though this in a lot of ways is streamlined it's still a pretty meaty complex game. no you're 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 this isn't your 30 I minute mean, like <laughs> look at what's on the table like there's still a lot of decks yeah yeah i mean <laughs> it's still fun to sort through yeah the setup is for the one the first time you get through it can be a little uh scary but it it does i think the real thing is it streamlines the turns a lot once you are playing you you do two actions per turn usually one of them is movement and then it like it, it goes pretty well quickly. i think it's not as much that the, there's less to do on or like less actions do i think there's still like oh, this entire thing to do <laughs> i think there's less for you to do it's usually like yeah i'm just gonna move there or something uh because if you remember arkham horde remember there's also the outer world so maybe you're out there doing stuff and plus like, each location used to have its own uh or maybe only some of them had its own ability i'm to. also not certain but to me it feels like i can get across the board a little quicker uh, I don't know. The board, it's a little, it's kind of smaller or it's more manageable to look at. If you can spend money is another thing to move more spaces than you normally are able to. I, I think part of it was like in the original one too, like the independent square, for example, say that might have been a dead end, some of them. So you'd have to go like one, two. Instead, this right. is, there's no real dead ends as much. I mean, depending on your board layout. That is true. That is something that's good. It's not always this with these flipped over. So like we played one where like, like there wouldn't be a connection there. Right, right. So there could be some weird uh, alteration. And these are double-sided, so you might have different locations depending on the scenario, which will vary it up. I feel like this, compared to second edition, uh, the focus on Doom tokens, and I, I, it's been a while since I've played it, so maybe there was something more similar to Doom tokens than that one, but it feels more, uh, like gives me more of a pandemic vibe of trying to go around the board and kind of control that right. population. I think in the older one, it was more just the monsters you were trying it to It was control. the game 
creates themselves where the, the gates, monsters would right. spawn. But the difference is, I feel like, and this is just when you go there, you it, like like in Pandemic, you just remove a cube. It's not really as complicated. Well, you do have to roll to see it. Right, but it's not like, that's it. Yeah. When the gates were like, you had to then, you had to go into the gate, <laughs> pop into the other world, <laughs> take like two turns to return, and then you had the right to maybe close the gate. It yeah. used to be a, a whole thing. So it's definitely faster in that regard. So... As you are as a person who owns every Arkham Horror experience. And I played through I played through them all, including one where everything was involved. So, so that was fun. So what's your, I mean, what's your overall opinion in terms of, do you feel like it is an improvement? Do you feel like it's a step back? Or do you feel like it's a whole other side game and they don't even... I want to actually put in the more all over side game because it's different enough that I could have both. I mean, the Arkham Horror, I do love how in-depth, like, all the stuff there is, and I love the small decks. I still... I think the problem is, though, I don't know when I would ever be able to have that hit the table. Right. <laughs> and that's not even if I threw in all the expansions, which I wouldn't suggest. I really suggest that one's a bit more... But there are some expansions there I do love to be added. When this, I felt like... I probably think I could convince most of the friend be like, yeah, let's play this. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's the big thing. I can tell you from personal experience, I'm much more in, likely to want to play this than that original game. And I feel like it's, uh, you know, it, do, it really does a great job to refining those elements. I will say one thing that I kind of struggle with, but it kind of is the game, and I don't mind it, but sort of on some level it bothers me, is that so much of it, and just like Eldritch too, is those skill checks. and so Oh, yeah, no, is, I mean... It's a lot of dice rolls. So it I mean, really is, and it can be really annoying at times because it's a, a two out of six chance. Right, right. Uh, of course, it's ignoring cards blessing. and items right. yeah, to mitigate it, but... And... I think going back, like, I really do think the second edition is a lot better. I enjoy it a lot more playing solo. Mm. Interesting. Uh, and this one, I think, a lot of, done both. I enjoyed it a lot more with the group because I almost like finding out the story with people and, like, especially with the choices. You know, it, it's sort of boring if, like, you're playing by yourself. Like, will you do this or this? Like, well, I guess he's going to do this and she's going to do this if you're controlling multiple characters. But, like, uh. <laughs> so the one thing I really don't like about this game is that news deck. <laughs> that I really, that is the thing. Like, I thought it would be like some weird things back and forth, but it just seems to be uh, annoyingly bad stuff if you don't have a dark pack. <laughs> like, a lot of them were like, this, do this thing unless you have a dark pack and stuff. So that was like the one thing that annoyed me in, of this, uh, the, whole, the whole way the game works. Uh, but other than that, like, it, it, just, it is, I think, just one that's it's a quicker Arkham. And now our crits and misses for Arkham Horror 3rd Edition. Crits. This isn't just a simple reskin or slight update of the second edition of the game. It does a lot of new things that makes it feel like it can stand completely on its own. We enjoy this because we already find Eldritch to be really too close to the Arkham Horror Second Edition. And if this was just a little bit nicer than Arkham Horror Second Edition, we'd be like, is it really worth buying? Considering the level of depth and complexity to the rules, the game plays pretty smoothly and can be played in a much faster time than the original Arkham or even Eldritch Horror. The different scenarios available in the game are varied and interesting and come with a unique story that make each time you play feel a little bit special, a little bit personalized, a little bit different. The modular board allowing for different locations each time adds to that as well. Misses. While this game does stand out from its second edition, we still find it has many decks, lots of pieces, tons of piles of tokens, so you can get confused during setup and where everything is laid out when you fill up your entire table. It's definitely streamlined in many areas compared to the last edition, but if you're hoping to be able to break it out with more casual gamers, you're probably still going to be out of luck. The third edition will leave those who enjoyed the second edition for its complexity and how much stuff there was in it, maybe wanting for more. In order to make it more streamlined, they did have to cut out a lot of the core mechanics from the original version. Unfortunately, it's kind of the flip side of the coin where if you loved that original one, you probably won't like this one quite as much. And the game still relies on the core mechanic of skill checks, with dice rolling and hoping for fives and sixes. This can leave some people a little annoyed that everything comes down to luck. I think that miss about uh, people who enjoyed the second edition for its complexity 
is a big one because it really does feel like there are two camps of people. Either you couldn't play that second edition, so you really like that this one's simpler, or you loved diving into that immense world and you're offended by what they cut out from it. Uh, I, I, which I kind of understand both sides. For me, this is a pretty good middle ground, honestly, where I feel like they retained a lot of the complexity while cutting a lot of the fat. And for me, I really like what they did with it. Well, that's exactly how I feel. I'm a huge fan of the second edition, mm -hmm. but I like playing that solo one more because I can, in essence, save state on the table <laughs> and not worry about other uh, players. But I feel like that this is so different. I didn't feel like Eldritch Horror, which I do get that too, and I enjoy that. But it's hard for me to, for those two to be like, you should get both. It's hard. I can't really say that. For this, I can be like, yeah, this is better for like, you have a group of friends over and maybe you have the two to three hours right. if for maybe the harder campaigns <laughs> or in how well people know how to play it. The, the problem, I guess, is that now that this is out, presumably Fantasy Flight won't be printing the second edition components. Right. You're going to have to go with Eldritch Horror now for yeah. that. And that's going to be uh, probably a, a sad issue. Uh, another big thing I, th I just realized we totally forgot to mention, Let's but mention. I know it's something we complained a lot about a lot, especially yeah. is the leader to Token. You can't decide who goes first each turn, which is something, I feel like that's something, honestly, I would just house rule, because I, I like, in a co-op game, I feel like, unless it's really something tied to the mechanics, but I don't feel like in this game it would change much. Right, like I think of uh, Pandemic, where you're strictly in a turn circle, I think that's alright, because you have to think a bit more and plan ahead, mm -hmm. but in a game like this, I really do love when everyone's at the table, like, all right, what if you went first? Because if you kill that, then I can get around and stuff. Yeah. Like, I feel like it allows for more uh, table talk, which is what you want. Yeah, opens up your decision-making a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I agree, I agree. But uh, overall, as we said, it's... While we do love, or I love the second edition, uh, this one, it does enough. I think it's different. It'll make it so people who maybe aren't as uh, warm to the second edition and think this can hit the table. Uh, you can play this in a game night. And we're very excited to see what else they bring to the table in the expansions. Are you one of those people who is clinging to the second edition? <laughs> or are you embracing the change of this new third edition? Let us know in the comments below. And we will read about it and uh, respond to it on a future episode. We're very interested in your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, you can follow us at, uh, at plenty of other places. Where just look for Roll for Crit. Instagram. Facebook, mm -hmm. Twitter, oh, yeah. In's Mouth. Oh yeah, that's a big one. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. Uh, under the sea, waiting to rise from our slumber. Uh, until that day comes when you summon us. I'm Jonathan. I'm Will. And this is Roll for Crit. Hey, if you like what you saw, don't forget to subscribe and like this video for more excellent board game content. Heck yeah.